yesterday. Uh, you had put out a, I don't know what we call these on Spoutable. Do we call them threads? Is, I, is it still called threads? They're, they're, they are called threads on Spoutable, correct. Awesome. Okay. So you had a fascinating thread on Spoutable where I, I actually have an account, y'all. And I'm pretty, I, yes, I will share my link in just a little bit. Uh, but y'all know I've been sort of not as present on a lot of social media platforms, but this is one that I was happy to join early on. Uh, but Christopher, one of the things you talk about was the role of media in shaping perceptions. And we all know that phrase, perception is reality. Talk to us a little bit about what you observed in the 2016 election with the way that the media was shaping perception and how that coverage is sort of what's the status of that coverage today <laughs> bring us from 2016 till now uh, with your thoughts on this process sure so in in 2016 uh, we saw how the media focused a lot on the emails uh, the negative stuff um, you know we had WikiLeaks when they published uh, what they said was Hillary's emails. And then we found out that some were and some were not. But, you know, the media once again covered it. Uh, at nauseum. we were just inundated, inundated with um, Hillary this, Hillary that. But at the same time, uh, the coverage of Donald Trump was significantly different. They would allow him to ramble on um, for, for, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, depending on what show it was, the coverage with him was was superficial um they they pretty much ignored all of the substance when it came to donald trump uh so the 2016 election you know in my opinion when it came to the media was was media driven um you know these narratives that we saw with uh hillary and just the negative stuff um was because of the media they focused on that and didn't focus on the substance where, you know, I believe, in my opinion, it did affect the election. Uh, fast forward to today, when we're looking at now, well, before it was with Biden, unfortunately, he has um, stepped aside. Uh, there was so much coverage about his quote unquote cognitive decline um, that, you know, is he capable of running the country? You know, there was little focus on Trump and that debate where, yes, we know Biden had a terrible debate. And yes, we know uh, Biden um, could have done better. But he 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 did hit the points. He didn't ramble. You know, he you know, he he, he, he had the facts down. If you read the transcripts, uh, he had the facts down. He just paused a lot. We know, you know, he he and he admits he, he didn't do well. Um, but he had a strong grasp of the policies, the facts and things of that nature. Whereas when you look at Donald Trump, he rambled. He yeah. absolutely rambled. Yeah. Um, so I just want to say, so, yeah. So, yeah, you know, it's it's the coverage was just so skewed to the point where it, it just seemed like they were just, just so focused on Biden and just ignore Trump. And this is, I got it. You are speaking to the frustrations of my soul right now. And I, my audience knows I, Joe Biden was not my candidate. Um, I, I kind of did what a lot of black voters do. It's like, all right, well, he won the primary. Black old people who vote say we're going to do this. So we're going to do this. And so like we did it. But I tell you at the end of June, because it was already like we knew it was going to be unfair. We knew it was. But it was it was enraging to me how much they would focus on these elements that had absolutely nothing to do with the job of being president. It was agonizing because it was like, my God, we're fighting misinformation. We're fighting disinformation. And, and Christopher, outside of these airwaves, I, I run a law center, the Center for Law and Social Justice at Megarevis College. And we do voter education for black people in New York City. And it was going to already be difficult. It was depressing coming to work. And largely because of these media narratives, I, we weren't even debating people on policy, on substance. It was whether or not he was sleepy. Like, and that was, it was absolutely frustrating to me, but it feels like in this current day and age, now that we have Vice President Kamala Harris doing record-breaking rallies and, and really driving a sense of excitement and joy in some really dynamic ways, we're seeing that same media apparatus at play. And, and it's just, it's mind boggling to me that we are still in this situation. What is your assessment 
as to now that Joe Biden is not in the race, which I personally feel was definitely something that the media is responsible for. And yes, I know that there's some names we could drop as well from some higher ups in the Democratic Party. I believe Joe Biden named Chuck Nancy as for one example. So we can definitely name those names as well. But the role of the media, the power to shape what people understand is happening. Give us a sense as to how you see that playing out right now with this very uh, 180 de degree contrast between Vice President Kamala Harris, Coach Walls, and whatever is happening on the Republican side of things. Right. So, you know, we're in the honeymoon phase and there's a yes. sugar high, as you can as you can see. And uh, VP Harris and uh, Tim Walls have flipped this uh, uh, election. Now, I just want to make clear, I do believe, and I've said this before, that Joe Biden was still headed for it when, and, so and do you know, I. yeah, you know, yep. we can talk about the polls and stuff like that, because I always tell people ignore the polls. But that being said, uh, there is a renewed energy, there is momentum, uh, there is enthusiasm like we have not seen before, including, in my opinion, once again, 2008. Uh, I do believe this is bigger than 2008, and they have flipped it. Uh, I, I also believe the media will at some point go back to their, you know, their shenanigans in terms of how the coverage was in 2016, how the coverage was really in 2020. And now uh, we saw earlier this year, um, I do think right now the media is still struggling on how they're going to cover uh, VP Harris and Tim Walls, like the Trump campaign is struggling on how they can frame this and in, in, in how they can attack her. You can you can see them trying different things and it's just not sticking. Um, it's going to be hard for the media to do what they did to Hillary Clinton, to VP Harris. And that's why I do think uh, it's going to go to, unfortunately, to Tim Walls, where they may try to attack him um, instead. Uh, but for right now, I mean, she's enjoying this this sugar high from Democrats and independents. And uh, there there is this this honeymoon period. Well, we we all enjoy the honeymoon as long as we can, although I'm um, <laughs> I'm actually we're about to be my husband and I are about to celebrate our 20th anniversary. So I very well oh, wow. know that honeymoons are lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but we know honeymoons don't last. Right? And we know right. that uh, our ability to have healthy relationships requires honesty. It requires some level of tension at times. It requires sort of a process of, of back and forth. So I, I am I'm, I'm as much as I'm excited about the honeymoon period. And I, I got to be honest with you, I agree. We was going to drag Joe Biden across that finish line. He was going to be the next president okay <laughs> we were gonna make that happen but it has felt a, a real sense of i've experienced a real sense of relief at, at just sort of seeing the very different reality um that we now have and 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 i think that so it's it's challenging but we are able to walk and chew gum at the same time one of the things that has immediately become apparent is the inequitable coverage of the rallies we've got these you know 10 15 20 000 person rallies thousands of people being turned away that have to basically stream on youtube or or a C-SPAN, whereas you know a half-filled gym gym room. I'm being a little facetious here, but like on the Republican side is getting wall to wall coverage. They did at that press conference in that awful room with the horrible acoustics, with the terrible conditions. And nobody in the media who was doing that press conference with Donald Trump said, hey, this is a terrible setup. We're doing the exact same thing we did in 2016. This dichotomy and treatment. What are we to make of this? And, and what should we, the media consumers, what should we be doing differently so that they can't shape our perceptions of reality in the way that they have traditionally done, at least traditionally over the past several uh, elections. Well, let's take let's just take that really quickly in terms of that press conference, because that was it was like a repeat of 2016. Uh, but where was the journalism at in that? And what I mean by that, uh, there is a lot of low hanging fruit right now. Uh, so, for example, with uh, his conviction, uh, I, I'm not hearing questions about, well, if you are sentenced uh, next month and you are sentenced to, let's say, some time in, in jail or home confinement, uh, why should voters vote for you? Why should voters vote for a convicted felon? We're not hearing that, right? Uh, there was an assassination attempt and Trump claimed that the bullet ripped through his ear. That's what he said. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, weeks later, we see him walking around with an ear, in my opinion, that looks perfectly fine. Yep. Why aren't there questions about this, right? Uh, so there's a lot of low-hanging fruit there. And um, journalists, for whatever reason, are not doing what they're supposed to do. Now, to your to your other question, in terms of the media, you know, um, a lot of the younger folks and a lot of 
that a lot of people in general have cut the cord and they're starting to get their news and, and things like that from other places, including to streaming. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, it's going to hurt the campaign as, as much as it would have in 2016 with not having these uh, networks cover the um the rallies because a lot of folks are just going to youtube and going to these other platforms and watching it live anyway and she's getting a lot of views i uh, heard in tim walls so although i do think that the coverage once again is skewed and they are focusing more on donald trump in terms of you know the chaos and everything like that and and covering his stuff and not covering her stuff but i do think the american folks are are seeing these rallies I'm I'm really glad about that, and I we are one of the folks who have been cutting our cords. Uh, we stream a lot, although still now I feel like we're paying more than we did for cable. But that's not the point. The point is we are, in addition to cutting the cords, I find that as a result of my utter distaste for the way the media has handled this, I'm watching mainstream media news far less. I mean a fraction and I'm, I'm one of those people who was a news who is a news junkie would often have CNN not really CNN MSNBC sometimes CNN playing in the background and, and that just is not happening anymore to the point where I feel a little bit more pep in my step Christopher Boozy because I'm like well you know I'm not feeling the weight of things in, the, in that way so what I'm hearing you say is we need to have alternative sources one of the reasons why I love uh, being here at Urban View I love uh, Roland Martin and the work that he's doing at, at, at uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered and I love that we have these spaces um, are there particular sites that you look to that are very trustworthy or that you you find to be more credible than others when it comes to where you are getting your your media news because like this show we don't break news we, we ain't no investigative journalist we're gonna no. analyze we're gonna have a racial justice perspective we're gonna have a social justice perspective but i'm not breaking any news what sources do you look to when you're trying to find out the actuals and the factuals about what's happening and that's a really good question i mean you brought up roland martin and i love roland Roland and I love his show and he does break a lot of news. Um, I think when you are looking for sources, you know, especially online, you do have to be careful, right? Because uh, the, the vetting is a little bit different. Uh, so, you know, Roland is, Roland is at the top of my list. Now, when it comes to, let's say, outlets in terms of news outlets, um, I, I, I am a bit particular, um, you know, NPR, uh, I still trust, the, you know, the Associated Press and stuff like that. New York Times, not as much as I, I did before, not as much as I did before with the Washington Post as, as well. Um, and I'm like you, I, I am a news junkie. Uh, but when it comes to like MSNBC and CNN, I have pulled away from those networks a bit because of what we just discussed today. I do think that uh, a lot of these, these um, outlets, they're, they're, they're not about breaking news anymore in journalism, more as entertainment. And I, I hate to say it, but, you know, they're more about the views and the clicks than there are about journalism. And, and you know, a very good example is what we saw with Biden, just the the focus on the once again, quote unquote, cognitive decline of Biden. He's he's currently running the country. You know, okay. he's he's, in my opinion, doing a decent job. And just completely ignoring the fact that his opponent was rambling next to him for approximately 90 minutes. It's it's just insane. Yeah, yeah. I, I do want to talk about that ear briefly, if we could. Sure, sure. <laughs> and I have refrained from really going where I want to go when it comes to talking about that ear. Because, you know, I, I do have an obligation. I, I never identify myself as a journalist. I am a, a an African-centered lawyer who basically stumbled <laughs> into a microphone. So God is good. The ancestors are merciful. But I don't consider myself a journalist. I'm trained as a social justice advocate. And I, I have a perspective. Um, but when it comes to that ear, I, I, I'm curious as to whether or not you have any best practices about how we could have conversations about that situation in ways that will not undermine um, a whole lot of things, right? But because to me, I, I have I have spent a lot of time as an adult. Um, I already told you, me and my husband married for 20 years. We dated for many years before that. Like, I'm not as youthful as I look in the face. I remember life before we had mass shootings at schools, and I know life after. I've got two kids, and they do shooting drills. And so because of that, I am very familiar, unfortunately, with 
the idea of, of shootings, AR-15s, we have seen um, the media. I, I Googled what it meant, what it looked like to have a grazed bullet. Like, because I, after that happened, I just couldn't believe it. And I Googled it and it looks nothing like what we saw. There is no indication whatsoever. Like, and the ear is not one of the parts of the body that heals super fast. I, I don't know. I, I got a lot of questions. There's so many. If you could see my group chats, Christopher Boozy, you'd be like, ooh, she talking much-ish in the group chats that I do not say on air. How do we have a conversation about what to me, these are my words, not yours, seems like an absolute potential fraud of the <laughs> highest order of the greatest most significant magnitude how do we have a conversation about that without slipping into the conspiracy theory side of things but i i just don't understand how the only people we don't heard talk about this wound have the last name trump and we ain't heard from a doctor ain't been no medical report biden sneezes out the side of his nose with a snot booger too hard and then we got to have a whole breakdown and the medical community has to come together to defend the man's right to snot talk to us how do we do this in a way that will at least bring some some clarity to to our side of the conversation and by our side i mean the truth side of the conversation right no in 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 honesty and look i know it 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 it, it can we can fall down that rabbit hole and it's it's easy to start to slip into conspiracy theories and things like that but deal with the facts the facts the facts are this he claimed that he was shot in the air. The bullet ripped through his ear. These are his words. Maybe not I'm verbatim. sorry. Even hearing you say it makes me want to snicker. Right, right, right. These <laughs> yes, were, you know, maybe not verbatim, but, you know, that's mm -hmm. pretty much the gist of what he said. Uh, he went on, um, you know, he came out during their convention with, with akin to a uh, cotex on his ear. I apologize if I can't. Oh say. no, I was reciting two short lyrics after the day after that came on. <laughs> that, that was I never thought that two short song would ever make it to to me speaking it on air. But I was doing the lyrics because you you was right about that. Mm -hmm. Right, and then um, after the convention, like a couple of days after, it went to little band aids to just disappearing, right. and um, so we know as as adults as we get older we do not heal as quickly as we used to when we were younger and even if a bullet just a nictum or shrapnel something like that hit his ear uh, i find it hard to believe that his ear was completely healed within mm -hmm. a few weeks uh, based on what he said um so it drives me crazy that there has been very little actually no pushback from the media just yeah. saying, hey, uh, Mr. Trump, you claimed the bullet ripped through your ear. Um, we're able to see your ear and your ear appears to be fine. Can you just explain to us right. um, you know, what happened here? Uh, was right. this magic? Uh, did your ear just uh, magically regenerate it? What exactly happened here, Mr. Uh, former President? Um, yeah. Uh, so, no, it's not a conspiracy theory when your eyes is telling you something and someone else is telling you something different. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I, I, I won't go so far as to say, because I know there are folks that, you know, are saying a lot of other things. But I will say on the point of him claiming that the bullet ripped through his ear, I don't believe that. And one other thing, um, the FBI um he first was like well we're not sure if it hit him and then right. they corrected it and said well yes um it you know it, it did hit it uh, i i i need them to elaborate uh on that because if a bullet hit his ear it would have caused significant damage uh we don't see significant damage yeah I, I i thank you for that because I, I i in my brain these conversations go really really differently it's usually some cussing involved <laughs> So I appreciate this is why we bring actual journalists to the show, because that's a that's a great way to do it. So you said this. What happened? And the fact that there is no what happened for me is what is the biggest tell, because if it, if the if the media took this seriously, it feels to me like there would be far more inquiry. It, it, even if for people who are in the Trump camp, wanting to demonstrate the danger he was in, wanting to talk about, I mean, I could spin this a whole number of ways, but if you know, if, we, if you were trying to uphold him, and I'm not, I'm very honest about that, you could say, look at the danger he's exposed to. You, this could be a story for days, talking about the failures of the Secret Service, which kind of was for a little bit, and, the, and then the failures of this entity and how uh, Donald Trump is exposed. He's out here fighting, nothing. 
Christopher, nothing, not a scintilla of discourse outside mm -hmm. of him saying what he said. And then that was it. And then when you had Eric Trump on mic, unless this was a deep fake and I didn't get that update, but on the microphone at the RNC talking about when he was asked, so what's underneath the bandage? Are there stitches under there? And Eric Trump's like, nah, no stitches. My guy. Like, <laughs> are we serious right now? Or is, it feels like we're in the upside down. Well, really uh, before we move on from this, I just want to say this. Uh, last night, um, Trump was in a mm. uh, spaces, as you know, with oh, Elon Musk. Know. Yeah, I know. That's that's a whole nother conversation there. And <laughs> he he went through, he talked about it a, a bit. And uh, he slipped up. If you listen to that um, conversation, he slipped up and said, it missed me. But then I think, yes, he he, he actually said it twice. Uh, he actually said it twice. Um, but then uh, he he realized what he said. He said, but it got me. Now, mm -hmm. you know, so of course, some folks are saying, well, he meant that it didn't hit his head and all this other stuff. But if it were me, you know, I would have said, well, look, the bullet, you know, it, it nicked my ear, but thankfully it missed you know, the rest of me, because I it could it, you know, end it a whole totally different way, or whatever. He said the bullet missed him. Um, I will I'm I'm I, I feel confident in saying that a bullet did not hit Donald Trump. At least a full bullet didn't hit him. Right. Maybe right. a tiny, 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 tiny frag it nicked him somewhere and it healed, but I do not think a a round actually pierced his ear. One of my kids was like, maybe the heat of it just sort of pooped on his ear, like just a, ear, a bullet fart, just like, and I was like, okay, you're, you're 10. All right, that's right. <laughs> but it made as much sense. It's interesting that you you referenced that conversation. I, I actually didn't listen to it. I just saw, heard some of the clips thereafter. Uh, but out of that conversation came this now, I guess, breaking news, uh, UAW, United Auto Workers Union. Uh, one of the largest in the nation uh, has filed federal labor charges against Donald Trump and Elon Musk for attempting to intimidate and threaten workers. And one of the things they reference is one of the lines that he did say in that conversation last night where Trump says, I mean, look at what you do. You walk in, you say you want to quit. They go on strike. I won't mention the name of the company, but they go on strike and you say, that's OK. You're all gone. You're all gone. So every one of you is gone. And the UAW says under federal law, workers cannot be fired for going on strike and threatening to do so is illegal under the National Labor Relations Act. So so in addition to the fact that Elon Musk has now been put on notice by the EU, that opening the doorways to this conversation is triggering a whole lot of potential uh, illegalities in Europe, in the European Union, uh, you've got this now additional fallout, uh, in addition to the fact that we all, from what I could tell from the clips, saw a man that is continuing to be in decline uh, in some pretty significant ways. It, um, This has got to be... <laughs> I'm just glad I'm not in politics, Christopher. <laughs> this would be a lot to manage going forward. I know we have just a moment or two left, but sure. as we move forward, what when it comes particularly for people of African descent, mm -hmm. because that's that's one of my areas of greatest concern. We know from the 2016 election uh, that foreign actors, uh, i.e., Russia being one, uh, were very clear about the very effective disinformation and misinformation campaigns that they were able to promulgate as against black people, really toying with the racial realities and history of this nation and using that to sort of drive black people, not necessarily into the arms of the Republican Party, but away from the voting booth. Absolutely. I'm very concerned about, we, we've got the whole uh, group of folks, I, I kind of lovingly, <laughs> lovingly call them the alphabet gangs, uh, who are very active on social media, driving a lot of discourse about who's black and who's actually black and who's foundational black versus, um, I guess if you're not a foundation, maybe second story black, third story, I don't know, like all of these different approaches to discourse that ain't got nothing to do with policy, ain't got nothing to do with whether or not our lives are actually going to be better off or worse off. How should people of African descent in particular, who are particularly susceptible to that sort of messaging because it does play on this history of, of rampant racism and institutionalized white supremacy in the society. What should community members in that segment of our population be doing to keep ourselves safe uh, from that sort of misinformation effort, often amplified by the media? Ex extremely good question, because uh, this is something I have been concerned about and I have talked about. Look, this election here, uh, Black folks, especially Black men in particular, are going to be targeted. Uh, we've already seen it. Um, and 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 it's exactly what you said to keep folks home. Uh, so with VP Harris, it's about she's not black. She's not one of you. Uh, do not believe her. She is 
you know, a usurper or whatever. Um, it's 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 a tactic that the campaign is 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 trying to do, and it's clearly on social media. So, you know, to your listeners, I will tell them ignore the noise. Um, you know, Does that, I mean, we shouldn't be clapping back at them because I oh, I love a good clap back. Well, I, I'm a no. God, I told you so kind of sister. So it's hard, Christopher Boozy. Although I know it's self defeating, it's hard. No, 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 no. Clapping back in terms now, when it comes to these larger accounts, um, absolutely. Because the one thing that I'm noticing uh, this cycle um, versus 2016 is there has been a lot of pushback. Um, that we did not see with Hillary Clinton. And let's just be frank, they, she had a lot of supporters, but they were not active on social media to push back right. against a lot of what we are, uh, that we saw then. Uh, now you're seeing, you know, folks coming out and saying, for example, uh, VP Harris is not uh, Black, and you will see the pushback from these large accounts. But for the, the you know, your general listener out there who may be just, with all this, this this craziness, just understand there are foreign actors that are constantly trying to influence what happens here in the United States. And as we get closer to November, uh, you're going to see this stuff ratchet up. Um, I think your your listeners already know that VP Harris is black. Uh, she did not just become black overnight. Um, so you 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 gotta you gotta keep that in mind. And one other thing, and it's really important. Have conversations with your friends and family um, because there are a lot of people out there. I hate to say this, especially black men who do believe a lot of the conspiracy theories around VP Harris, whether it be because she is or isn't black or that she put a bunch of black men in jail and all this other stuff. You got to have these conversations and let folks know that this is not accurate. This is misinformation. Yeah. Well, I, I'm glad to be a part of this effort to have honesty or at least a, an honest driven dialogue, a transparent driven dialogue, because for me, I, I vote for who you're going to vote for. Me and my family, we will be all right. <laughs> we'll be all right. I, but I have a a concern for the masses of our community, and because the masses of our community are not going to be all right, and so it's really important to me that as as much as I am trying to uh, not feed the trolls, I do sometimes have to smack some around because you know this is what you got to do. But I, I'm I'm really hopeful that because of this increased amount of pushback, I want to shout out Reese Colbert, who's also a, a host on on this channel on this network on Saturdays at. 3 p.m. Reese with the receipts is like a trending thing. That's like her new name when we're on the Win with Black Women calls. They give the Reese with the receipts segment. So she's able to come and I'm loving this effort. Um, and, and I'm hopeful that between that, uh, those of us who are doing the work of making sure people are civically engaged uh, and the overall uh, appreciation that I think people have for this notion that perhaps the pall that has been sitting over the country may now be dissipating. Uh, I, I'm grateful. I'm very, very grateful. Now, I, I see someone has just tweeted. Uh, shout out to Alan Orr, one of my favorite immigration attorneys. He says he loves the sound of two children of black immigrants in conversation about the good of America. Christopher Boozy, where are you from? Where are your people from? Yeah, no, my my mother uh, was from Panama and my father was from Haiti. I was born here in the United wow. States. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So my mom's from Jamaica. My dad's from New York. Um, they met in New York when my mother's family immigrated. And I, oh, let me say this. My mama is black and from Jamaica because right? that's her race <laughs> and her nationality for people who are confused. Um, and my father is black and American. That's his race and nationality as well. Because, you know, how, all we need is a whole other thread. And we ain't really black, uh, which, uh, you know, I've weathered that storm before. I really appreciate you giving us some of your time today. I hope we can get you to come back. It's important for us to have access to folks who aren't just in the journalism space but who are studying it and recognizing the patterns. Uh, and I've been following you for a little bit and really appreciate the work that you're doing. Oh, absolutely. I will come back anytime you want. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Oh, before you go, though, what's the best way for people to follow you, get connected to Bot Sentinel, Spoutable? Give us sure, all those details, sure. and then we'll give you another applause. <laughs> no, sure. No, you can find me on Spoutable, uh, S-P-O-U-T-I-B-L-E.com. I'm C Boozy there. If you're still on the housecape formerly known as Twitter, you can find me at C Boozy as well, C-B-O-U-Z-Y. And um, I'm on Instagram, same handle, C Boozy. But uh, yeah, you know, Join up Spotable and uh, you can you can connect with me anytime.